Okay, where are you going? Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Ch Superintendent Anthony Fioravanti, the officer in charge of Traffic Support Branch. I'd like to thank you for coming here today because it's really important that you help us with this appeal uh, to get out to the community. Police are currently investigating the death of Mrs Lucy Pavley and we are appealing for witnesses to help identify a vehicle and driver who was present at the intersection at the time of the collision. Mrs Pavley was killed at the intersection of Main North Road and Kings Road Parafield at 6.36am on Sunday the 20th of August as she drove to work. We are seeking the driver of a vehicle similar to a silver grey 2004 to 2007 Corolla hatchback, that's a Toyota, that witnessed this collision and do not have the vehicle's registration number at this point. The collision occurred directly in front of this vehicle. Mrs Pavley would have driven past this vehicle while it was stationary on Main North Road seconds before the collision. There was no way that the driver of this vehicle wouldn't have seen what had happened because it happened right in front of them. This vehicle then continued north along Main North Road towards Clayson Road intersection. The driver of this vehicle or any person who is able to assist police with the, with the identity of the driver is asked to please contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. A task force has been formed to investigate the collision and the surrounding circumstances of the collision. I'm now going to hand you over to Detective Chief Inspector Shane Addison. Good morning. Uh, as uh, Superintendent said, my name is Detective Chief Inspector Shane Addison. I'm the officer in charge of Elizabeth CLB. I've been asked to form a task force to investigate the uh, collision and the circumstances surrounding the collision, which resulted in the death of Mrs Pavley. As a result of investigations conducted so far, we are aware that the black uh, Mazda 3 sedan uh, that was used by the suspects to uh, flee the scene was stolen in the Brum Lodge area between 2 and 4 in the morning on the 20th of August. That vehicle subsequently turned up in the Grange area where the Pajero that was involved in this collision was stolen at about 5.30am. We are aware that a number of premises were entered in the Brum Lodge area shortly before that Mazda 3 was stolen and we are appealing for witnesses who may have seen the, the group of people involved in that or have CCTV footage of those people in that area at that time to come forward and contact police. A similar situation uh, uh, is involved at Grange and we are aware that a number of premises both before and after the Pajero was stolen were entered by the same group or what we believe to be the same group in the Grange and the Henley Beach South area. We again ask for anybody whose property may have been entered or that has sorted either of the vehicles, the occupants of those vehicles, or has CCTV footage or dash cam footage of those vehicles or those occupants in that Grange or Henley Beach South area to contact Crime Stoppers. We're further aware that the vehicles travelled in convoy from the Henley Beach South area to the Evandale area where they were first sighted by police between 5.50am and 6 25 a.m. on Sunday the 20th. We again call for anybody who may have seen or had contact with those vehicles and may have footage from a dash cam or CCTV footage to come forward and approach us. In addition, we are aware that the Mazda 3 stopped at some time after it was stolen and obtained fuel. We have no indication at this stage that that fuel was stolen. However, we've been unable to identify where that fuel was obtained. We ask any person who may have information in relation to where that Mazda stopped and obtained fuel, and particularly those who may have CCTV footage of that incident, to again contact Crime Stoppers. Thank you. Uh, with the Toyota Corolla, uh, is there any reason why you think that person has contacted you? Um, clearly we're unable to answer that question because we don't know who that driver is and what their circumstances were, and that's why we're appealing for that person to come forward. There's absolutely no uh, information that that person was involved in any way. They appear to be simply an innocent member of the public who was parked at the same set of traffic lights, uh, at a red light, immediately before the collision. 
Uh, unfortunately, Ms Peverley has driven past that vehicle uh, just as the lights have changed and the collision happened uh, very, very close. In fact, uh, we are of the belief from the vision we've obtained so far that that vehicle was within uh, seconds of having been part of the collision. So it was very, very close to the collision scene at the time, which is why we believe that that driver could not have missed, possibly have missed the intersection. It happened, uh, the collision that happened right in front of them. So is your appeal today uh, in a bid to identify any more perpetrators or, uh, or, or what? Um, clearly at this point in time, uh, it's early in the investigation. Um, we are carrying out a comprehensive investigation into all of the circumstances. And so we haven't limited ourselves to any individuals at this stage. And we are clearly seeking witnesses and further vision, along with conducting other forms of investigation to identify everybody that may have been involved with these vehicles from the time they were stolen till the time they were recovered. Chief Inspector, um, the, uh, can the public be assured that the appeal for information does not mean that the case and the prosecution against the five youths, teenagers currently before the courts will be undermined in any way? Are you confident in the prosecution of those youths? I am absolutely confident in the prosecution of the youths. What we are seeking is all the available evidence that we can obtain in relation to criminal activities surrounding these vehicles. But I guess that this appeal, is this because the teenagers that have currently been detained, is this because they're no longer cooperating with detective inquiries? I'm not going to go into what may or may not have come out of uh, interactions with the people who are suspected at this stage and have been charged. What I can say is that we're conducting a comprehensive investigation, which is clearly stretching right across the metro area, and we're seeking as much evidence as we can in relation to the activities related to these two stolen vehicles and the people that may have been in them or associated with them during that activity. Can you confirm, Chief Inspector, whether or not those youths and those teenagers were known to police and any of their associates were known to police? Uh, I'm not going to go into associates. Uh, what I can say is that uh, at least one of them was known to police, uh, but I'm not going to go any further than that. You can't um, identify which one of those teenagers? I'm not going to go into any further information about that. How long will that task force operate for? Is it just a case of gathering as much evidence as you can? Uh, the task force uh, hasn't been given a, 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 an end date as such. Uh, we have been asked to uh, collect the evidence and then uh, present a uh, brief of evidence to the DPP for them to be able to formulate charges before the courts. Um, you said a string of places were sort of broken into. It sounds like they were quite busy before the crash. How many do you think were broken into? Uh, I didn't say they were broken into, I said those premises were entered. Um, so how many? Um, that's part of the reason we're appealing for witnesses, so that we can try and identify as many premises as possible. Again, I'm not going into the depth of uh, evidence that we have at this stage. What we are doing is appealing for people who may have information, uh, who haven't previously come forward to the police to come forward and do so. And that's primarily around Grange, is that right? Uh, we've got Brummer Lodge, and then Grange and Hilly Beach South. Can you be more specific in the areas? Do you have streets or...? Um, because we're carrying out a comprehensive uh, investigation of these areas, uh, I cannot be specific about that. Clearly at this point in time we cannot give specific areas as to where they may have been. We are clearly aware of the addresses where the vehicles were taken from, uh, but we're looking for anyone in those vicinities who may have information. The, so far, up until this point in time, how many homes do you believe were targeted? Oh, I can't give you that information. Uh, primarily, and that's why we're here asking for witnesses now. Superintendent, can I just ask you about the road toll in general? Because since this particular crash a week and a half ago now, we've had, correct me if I'm wrong, but four or five fatalities since then. Um, you must be concerned about the fact we're 15, I think, more this year than last year. Yeah, it's definitely a concern of, of ours. Uh, however, when you analyse you know, the recent crashes, you know, there's no commonality between them, other than the fact that, unfortunately, four uh, involved motorcycle riders. Uh, one was a passenger in a car, uh, and and one uh, was, as I was unfortunately Lucy Pavley. Uh, and there's nothing, unfortunately, we could do about that crash. Uh, so at the moment, we're looking at our different strategies. Uh, we do know that with all fatalities, you know, one of the contributing factors is always a fatal five. Um, and I know it's, sometimes it's a message that we keep repeating and people are possibly getting bored with the message, but the reason that we keep giving this message is that, that is what is killing people uh, on our roads.
And I need to also stress the fact, it's not cars or motorbikes killing people, it's actually people. It's their choices that they make when they're behind the wheel or on the, the seat of that motorbike. So we need to try and change the behaviour uh, so that all people can enjoy our roads safely. 15 motorcyclists now compared to five a year ago, uh, does that warrant special attention? Well, motorcycles is something that we do actually target, uh, and it's normally in the later part of the year, uh, and that's around October. We run Operation Safe Hills, uh, so we know that when the weather's nice, people get their motorbikes out of their shed that they possibly haven't ridden for months, uh, and they'll go up and down the hills. So that's why we run that operation. Uh, currently, we are looking at running other operations, which will focus on uh, possibly a lot of it will be on weekends, even though, I must admit, uh, a lot of those, or half, half the motorcycle accidents didn't happen on weekend. But we want to concentrate on areas that we know that there will be a lot of motorcyclists. Uh, so our high visible presence may impact on their behaviour. Superintendent, can I ask you about the Padley family? Um, the <coughs> husband, Lucy's husband, has made uh, several public statements about the need for forgiveness, I guess for all of a better word, not to have bitterness or anger. Um, do you have any views on how the family have handled such a tragedy? Well, unless you're in his shoes, it's really hard to comment. However, my observations of Jamie and his family is that, you know, they should be commended for how, you know, they've dealt with this. Um, and it's important because they're... They want everyone to have a, a memory that they will cherish about, about Lucy uh, and they have uh, treated this incident with, with dignity, uh, which is, you know, uh, that they should be commended for. Okay, thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.